Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to EVE Online. My name is Michael. Uh, today I'm going to be doing some level 4 missions. I've gotten into doing uh, missions recently, just as, you know, one of my one of my ISK making activities. Um, and I figured, since there's not a ton of, you know, video walkthroughs of them, uh, just because the sheer number, I'm going to try to give walkthroughs to as many of them as I can. So I'm doing these missions for the uh, the Sisters of Eve Corporation, which has some of the best uh, things that you can trade in for loyalty points. You can pretty reliably get 1,000 to 1,500 ISK per loyalty point. Um, and in this video, we're going to be doing the Recon mission series. It's three consecutive missions you get and they're actually really fast to do. The rewards are not great for them, um, but we don't even need to fire a shot to do these. So I'm going to accept this one. Its location is in system. And I'm gonna show you the fit I'm using for this. I'm flying a Dominix. Uh, my skills for the Dominix are not actually that great. Um, I have medium rail guns on this because like I said, my skills aren't great and I don't have large rail guns yet. I have two drone link augmenters, which will uh, increase the the range of my drones. Um, but all of these we're not going to use for this these missions because we're not going to be shooting anything. Rigs, I have some tank rigs that uh, give bonuses to kinetic and thermal damage for my armor. Um, I'm not sure those are the best rigs, but I already had them on this Dominix before I started fitting it for missions. On the mid slots, we have three cap rechargers, Tech 2, and a large cap battery. Uh, and then we have a 500 MN micro warp drive, which that is going to be very important for these missions. Uh, and then down here in the bottom slots, we have four drone link or drone damage amplifiers. Uh, that's actually a Tech 1. I should probably upgrade that when I can. I for some reason I thought I had a Tech 2 there. Well, that's to do later. Uh, I have a damage control, I have a reactive armor hardener, and I have a large armor rep. And I found that this fit tends to, uh, tends to be able to handle pretty much all of the missions I've found. Um, it doesn't specialize in any one thing, but that's good because this mission, you know, being able to shoot things for a lot of DPS doesn't really help. So, and over here in the drone bay, we've got uh, six or, you know, a wing of five bouncers. Those are sentry drones. Um, they have, sentry drones honestly have more variation than any other drone type. We can go into show info here and I'll show you what I mean. Um, the optimal range of this, once my bonuses are applied, is 44.1 kilometers, and fall off is another 45 past 10. So up until, honestly, the range I can lock at, uh, and my drone control range, which is 75, I still have pretty good accuracy on these. On the other hand, the guards, the Galente sentry drones, have an 18 kilometer optimal range, um... Now I guess this is, I do have a pretty significant bonus to this with uh, you know, the, the base is 30. But even still with, with guards, uh, it's 18, you figure I get an extra 50% from that, it would only be at 27. Uh, and that is not far enough for my purposes here. So I went, I opted for drones with longer range, slightly worse tracking and a little bit lower damage because I want to be able to hit things from very far away. Uh, less important are all the other drones, but they still have their uses. Um, I have four Federation Navy Ogres and a Praetor. Um, I had a wing of five Federation Navy Ogres, but I lost one of them because I was not paying attention and didn't recall it in time. And then I have Hobgoblins for my light drones. Those are going to be the most important besides the sentries, because the sentries, once they get under your guns, like the fast frigate-type enemies will be able to do, uh, we really want 
something with, with excellent tracking speed to be able to hit those. In the inventory, I'm using antimatter charges, and then you'll notice I have three mobile tractor units. Those will not be useful in the mission we're running, but in subsequent videos, I can show you what I do with those. Uh, I just drop one in every single room and then come back later in my salvage ship, which is a Noctis. So let's undock and get to doing this mission. We're going to run all three of them today. It shouldn't take very long. We're going to warp the encounter. Warp drive active. And we're going to go through the gate here. Now on the warp in, there's going to be, I believe, some enemies right away, but there will also be an acceleration gate. All we have to do is go through the gate. We don't need to kill any of the enemies. And so to do this quickly, we are just going to turn on our micro warp and burn straight to the gate and jump through. And that is going to be a recurring theme with this with this series of missions. You see the enemies coming in, but we're going to pay no heed to them. Switching on our micro warp and burning. I do recommend for these missions having a battleship with good tank because you can see it's, it takes us a little bit to burn uh, to the gate so we we will take some damage and that will again be a recurring theme See, the gate is not locked. All we have to do is warp. Uh, more and more enemies will warp in, so if you start fighting here, you really want to make sure you can win the fight. I don't know if I could, which is one of the reasons why I'm just doing this the fast way. The bounties are pretty good on the enemies. You see, both battleships are worth over a mil, but we're, we don't care about that. I'm going to turn on the armor hardeners, repair, and we'll get into warp in just a second here, and that'll be the mission. There we go. I believe there will be enemies in the second room as well, but we're going to, as soon as we land, complete said mission. There we go, mission complete. Yep, enemies come out, but we're just going to dock up. We don't care what those enemies are doing. Pulse the micro warp to jump a little faster.
You can see from this we're going to get about a million ISK and 1,800 loyalty points, which is probably another two, two and a half million ISK. That is not bad for, I'm going to guess that's five minutes of work. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Complete mission. And then the next one we get will be Recon 2 of 3. So we're going to accept this as well. The reward is a little lower, but it is just as easy. <laughs> and will be very similar in nature. So we're going to warp to the mission objective. Warp drive active. I'm just going to see how long this entire series takes. We we turned that in at 32 minutes. Um 1732. So I'm going to say that first one took five minutes-ish, and we'll see what time we finish the third one, and how much ISK that was. Just writing down here the loyalty points we've gotten as well, so I can factor that in at the end. Okay, so you see here a, a structure, there's a warp gate off to the side, that's our objective. We can't actually warp through it. Uh, it is locked and it will never unlock, as far as I know. All we have to do is get within 10 kilometers of it. And there's no enemies here. When we get within 10k, uh, enemies will show up and ambush us. Uh, but that will also be the trigger for completing the mission. So at that point, we will just warp out. It is a really cool looking structure. Kind of wish that uh, we could build one of these. Maybe CCP has something planned with uh, the the upcoming drilling platforms. <clears throat> Almost there. And 
now the ambushes warp in. You get one group over there and then one group close to the gate. And we've completed the mission, so we're going to dock up. Warp drive active. It is quite a large amount of incoming DPS here, but since we don't need to fight, we don't care about it. In a big bulky ship like a Dominix, the warps, you know, when, when you were burning at a high velocity, it can take quite a while to warp because you have to cancel out that inertia. Come on. There we go. So, second mission done, we can see that took about six minutes. <clears throat> Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. No, sorry, it was 32, so it took seven minutes. And we got 800 loyalty points from it. And about half a million isk. So the last one has the lowest reward, but it is still just as easy. Um, this one... Your, your tank actually matters a little bit, but we move fast enough that You'll see, it, it won't be hard. Warp drive active. We're actually going to take a significant amount of damage in this one, though. So do make sure that you have some form of tank. So we warp in to this pocket. <clears throat> there's, there's no actual entry acceleration gate. Uh, our target is this acceleration gate. We have to jump through it. But there's explosive gas in our way. Um, and that is going to do, you can see here, uh, it, it's going to hit us for all four types of damage. Now it's not, it's going to take a break between each wave of damage, but also each wave will hit harder than the last. So if you just sit around here, you'll start getting hit for really crazy amounts of damage and possibly die. Uh, there is a final wave that if you survive it, then the damage will stop and you can just fly up and 
jump through the gate, but by far the most effective way is to burn to the gate and jump well before that final that final wave of damage. Next wave might get us into armor, so I'm going to turn on the hardeners now. Yeah, a little bit of armor damage there, and I'm going to use our, our rep to heal that back. Probably going to get hit one more time here. Okay, there we go. Repair that. Warp drive active. Oh, okay, one more hit past that. As you can see, that's the amount of damage coming in is easily repaired through. My my tank isn't even that great. It's just okay. As long as we don't just sit around here for, you know, three three to four minutes, we're fine. And that will clear the mission for us. We get jumped into this interesting looking structure. And then we can dock back at the station. Warp drive active. See, this will have taken another six minutes. So we'll say each one took six minutes, and we'll add two to get to 20, just because that's easily divisible into like an hour. Got about 300,000 discs from that, and we'll say 600 loyalty points here since I rounded down for the others. Just doing some uh, back of the napkin math here. We got 3,200 loyalty points. Uh, we'll make a very conservative estimate and say 1,000 disc per loyalty point. We should be able to get well over that, but that's really the worst we might get with Sisters of Eve missions. So that's 3.2 mil isk from loyalty points. and a further almost 2 mil from mission rewards. We'll, we'll say 5 million isk for 20 minutes of work. 15 mil per hour is not great, but is still better than you might get uh, mining. It's, it's definitely nothing to sneeze at. And these are some of the, the low-end reward missions. Uh, I will be making other videos for other missions. But for now, uh, this is where we part ways. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that if you have gotten this mission yourself and uh, are thinking of running them, that it informs what fit you use um, and what, uh, what ship, what hull you choose to use for it. I think any battleship with a decent tank and a micro warp should be able to, to do these no problem. Uh, you don't really need exceptional skills, so good luck, fly safe, and as always, uh, good hunting. Later, y'all.